Jumia, a stock worth investing in. Is it even pronounced Jumia? I don't know. <laughs> but we're going to find all of that out over the next hour. If you're new to the series, Brian Stoffel and I take a stock that we haven't researched before and we research it live. You're going to see us digging through SEC filings, looking at investor presentations, talking to each other, all an attempt to figure out if this company is worth investing in or not. Brian Jumia, I'm assuming that's the, that's the pronunciation, was picked because we did a poll on Twitter, uh, as we do every other week, and Jumia was the overwhelming uh, choice amongst the companies that we put up. And I'll tell you what, it was interesting because when I went to bed the night that that happened, it was not anywhere close to first place. And then when I woke up, I think maybe our voters on the other side of the world who were up then really pushed this one to the front. All right. And fair enough. Uh, so that's what we're going to uh, start digging into. And as always, thank you to StockCard.io for sponsoring today's video. We're going to use StockCard at the end of this video to hold ourselves accountable. So with that, let's get going. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to share this. So we are going to start with, my, with our investing uh, frameworks here. The ticker symbol here is JMIA. This is a eleven dollar stock. Oh my goodness! It's at one billion. One billion dollar market cap, down eighty four percent. That its... means it was like nine billion within the past year. Woo! What a move! Uh, I'm just gonna go out and uh, a limb and just say it hasn't beaten the market. Yeah, over I'm gonna the last agree five with you there. Years? Does it have recurring revenue? Is it profitable? Is it free cash flow positive? I don't know. We're we'll going to find, find all of that out. So, okay. So we're going to go on over to stock card and type in Jumia, J-M, Jumia Technologies AG is the name of it uh, here. So let's go back. So, okay. So they came public in 2019 at 43, currently downed 73% since the all time high. So and what, nowhere what, close to beating the market. What did it get up to in February there? Can you see about 50, 60, maybe we could 50. say. 57? Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Jumia Technologies is the pan-African e-commerce platform. The company's platform consists of a marketplace, which connects sellers with consumers. Its logistics service enables the shipment and delivery of packages from sellers to consumers. And the company's payment services facilitate transactions amongst participants active on its platform in select market. Jumia generates revenue from sales of goods, commissions, fulfillment, value-added services, and marketing and advertisement. Its geographical segments are West Africa, North Africa, East and South Africa, Europe, and the UAE. The firm generates most of its revenue from the West Africa segment. What does this remind you of more than any other company? Um, Mercado Libre? I agree. but like, Because that's the big three, right? They've got the marketplace. Yep. They've got logistics. And payments. And they've got payments. That's, That's the correct. one thing that Amazon doesn't have. Okay. So let's see how this company has uh, done uh, recently. So peer-to-peer -peer payment systems. So that's a market that it's in. All right. So let's check out sales growth. 4.3% decline. I will year. say, I, I, so I do know a little bit about this company and that decline it's working its way through the system, but they went from being a first party merchant to a third party, which means that they used to sell Jumia or Jumia stuff. And then they stopped doing that and they're focused more on third parties. So the revenue goes down, but profits can still go up because they're much higher margin. Yes, sure. So it's like exactly the same move that Amazon made internally. Yes. 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 So instead mm -hmm. of Jumia, you're saying instead of Jumia buying the goods, inventory the goods, shipping the goods, they're now just a marketplace that connects buyers and sellers together. Exactly. So it's going from an Amazon business model to an eBay business model. Yep. Yeah. And obviously that does wonky things to your revenue right. because you can't record the whole thing as a sale. Right. Uh, you just record uh, your part your part of it. That's okay. why gross merchandise volume will be a better indicator. Okay. That, that counts all the stuff that's sold. And their take rate. Yes. Uh, okay, so 8% revenue growth in the last quarter. Three years, it's a 15 growth rate. It's going down, okay. Profitability, uh, big time negative. EPS trend has been up and gross profit margin is almost 60%. That's pretty good. For, for this kind of business, sure. Yeah. 
Um, I, Mercado Libre, I think, is in the 40s? I'm not sure. 30s? Um, in theory, they have a good balance sheet. No long-term debt. Hugely free cash flow negative. Uh, all of the returns on everything is going to be bad. Uh, we know that their stock has done terrible. Please don't tell me you're paying a dividend <laughs> or buying yeah. back stock. Um, uh, okay. So this is uh, Jumia, an introduction video. All right. So let's pull up some third quarter uh, results. I wonder if they have a presentation. Yeah, there we go. Oh, uh, recent too. Oh, uh, no, wait. It, that's, that hasn't that, happened yet. <laughs> oh, they still have it. All right. Okay. We're going into the future, Brian. Okay. So this is going to be a foreign company anyway. So the SEC filings are going to be a little bit wonky. So we're going to be looking for the annual report as the most uh, recent one. So Jumia overview, the strategy update, and the highlights. Africa is a massive market. Yes. Buy it. And yes. also going to be increasingly the, more, like, more important. Yeah. The, the everything that I've seen have said that the gravity is shifting towards Africa. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know how many countries are in Africa. 50, 60, maybe That's something like that. So huge population. Um, half of them, less than half of them are internet users. 17 million SMEs. Is that small, small medium-sized medium -sized enterprises? enterprises? Yeah. Is that like SMBs? Yeah, it's the same as SMBs. Mm -hmm. And merchants. 4 trillion in household and business to business spending. Our mission. Hey. Leverage technology to improve everyday life in Africa. Uh, top top 20. You like it? Yeah, I do. To uh, to improve everyday life in Africa? Mm-hmm. Okay. I think it's optionable. Yeah. I think it's inspirational. And as we get into it, I well, I will say it's it's simple, inspirational. The optionable part is I think led them astray a little bit. They're biting off a little bit more than they can chew, but I, I like it to improve okay. everyday life and yeah. technology. I, that's simple. They put it right up front. Good job. Uh, Jumia delivers innovative, convenient, and affordable online services to consumers in Africa that help them fulfill basic needs every day. Jumia takes the entire African economy online, helping businesses to grow, creates jobs, and empower a new African generation to build their lives and make their countries better. Okay. We are the leading pan-African e-commerce platform. So a marketplace, a logistics, and a payment platform. One brand, single sign-on, full integration. Okay, buy a smartphone, buy Smooge, buy groceries, recharge your data plan, pay your bills, order pizza, and many more. 7.3 million consumers, 110,000 sellers, uh, C936 million GMV. I think that means like about? Or, yeah, okay. Gross merchandising volume. About a billion. For a 12-month period, about a billion. Uh, so they're trading at one times gross merchandising volume. Uh, 31 million orders. 30 per six transactions via Jumia Pay. So about a third of their transactions go through their payment facility. Our integrated system is geared towards driving consumer engagement. Okay. Physical goods. And services, utility bills, airtime, classifieds, instant delivery. That's one thing that's going to be market to market differently, right? Yep. Um, I know payment structures are just vastly different in um, uh, emerging economies. And, you know, I will, I will also say that like with Mercado Pago, and this is something that I know a little bit more about since I've, I've lived in Latin America, is that the use of these things for things like instant delivery, food delivery, airtime recharge, utility bills, those might seem small to us in the United States, because that's not how we onboarded to digital payment. It's not how we onboarded to e-commerce. That is how onboarding happens in other places. Sure. In the world. It's a oh, bigger deal there than it is here. That makes, that makes sense to me. If you're working with smaller dollars, the ability to like uh, prepaid phones, like prepaid phone plans are a big thing here. I can see them being postpaid or month to month in, right. uh, in other countries. That's how we do it when we're, when we're in, Sure. In Costa Rica. Right. So the, the, the dynamics are clearly different. Mm -hmm. um, our Pan-African presence is a huge asset. 600 million people. Is that in your Yeah, that's markets? that's just in those. I mean, the fact that they have Nigeria is the honestly the right. big one. It's a huge Nigeria one. is and South the center Africa. of gravity. Yes. And, South, and, and, and Egypt, right? So these are the 
some of the most populous countries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, half the population lives in there. Now, one thing I will of GDP. say about that, though, is that figuring out logistics, I mean, this would be like if Amazon, and I, Africa is not a country, I'm not trying to say it is, but this would be like Amazon saying, we're going to do California, we're going to do Chicago, Texas, and New York. That, like, that's, that's not easy, mm -hmm. navigating logistics that way. The fact that it's so spread out. Right. And oh, by the way, there's a huge desert between those northern and right. southern ones. <laughs> right. Um, okay. Natural partner for global brands, economies of scale, challenge. Yeah. Our platform is custom built for Africa. Seller platform or brand logistics. Okay. Scalable platform with deep local expertise. We provide a diverse product offering of products and services. Split of number of items sold by product category. This is interesting. Fashion, beauty, home and living, food delivery, digital, FMCG, fast moving consumer goods. Okay. Phones, like yeah, diversified business. Boy, I tell you what, that that is that is pretty good. Ninety percent of which are sold by third party sellers, which right. is fantastic. So that means that their transition is almost complete. It, yeah, nine. So ninety percent of. I would assume revenue too is also coming for that. We'll check that. Yep. 48 million live product listings. Okay. And 110,000 active sellers. We provide sellers with an attractive value proposition. So big time brands, local sellers and cross border sellers get into your network and then you can access these different countries. So kind of like D local and, um, Yep, for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. We deliver a superior localized experience to consumers. Globally is the other one I'm trying to think of. Yeah. Uh, brain fart there. Uh, selection, price and convenience, local language, local currency. Yeah. How about uh, delivery as well as returns? I mean, returns is a huge logistics of that is very yeah, complex. So let, let me explain the little bit that I know about that as well, about returns, because one of the things that I did a show on this for the Motley Fool with Jason Hall, and he explained how literally one of the problems is, is that you can order something, you know, in Africa on your phone and not have a way to pay for it because not everybody has a payment solution. That's why hmm. junior pay is so important. And the delivery can come to wherever you live, whatever kind of structure it is. And if you're not there when they come, you can't pay for it. Right. And so you're, the delivery person is not going to wait there all day, obviously. Sure. And so then they return. So monitoring the amount of like chargebacks or returns is actually really important because it lets us know where is this company in terms of its fit to its, the people in Africa that want to use it. Because if, if 25% of the goods are being returned because nobody's there in the moment, that's a big problem. Yeah. It, if they already paid for it, you can leave it outside their home and it's no big deal. That might sound super simple and you might be like, well, why are we talking? Because that's a real thing that they need to deal with. Um, so it's just something to keep in mind because again, it's something that if you're watching this from North America and judging by the comment section, I'm seeing we have lots of people from around the world watching right now. Um, so they might be a little bit more familiar with this, but it it's an issue. Okay. Yeah, like I know that um, Amazon in the United States, like in city centers, uh, theft of packages is a big deal. Oh, it's huge. Uh, so, so they, they put these lockers mm -hmm. everywhere as a way, because you can't just, you can't just drop it off on your doorstep like you can in the suburbs. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure same problem exists uh, everywhere. Yeah. In Latin America, there's where, where we live, no addresses. So I mean, <laughs> work on that. Yeah. Uh, each country has its own challenges. Yep. Okay. 78% of shoppers bought on Jumia over the last 12 months of on, of all online shoppers. I'm reading that of all of online shoppers who bought on Jumia within the last 12 months. Wait, what? Yeah. Is that, of Oh, they're saying it's their preferred destination out of all of the people that use Jumia. 80% say that's their preferred destination. Oh, Okay. 80% of German impressive. shoppers said they would be purchased on Jumia over the same period. 89% of shoppers would recommend the company to a friend. Okay. 
As consumer adoption of e commerce grows, we are well positioned for growth. 74 respondents who are non online shoppers know Jumia. Hmm. 60% of non online shoppers who know Jumia consider for trial in the six months. Barriers. I don't know how to shop. I don't think products are genuine. I cannot check the quality of the products. Sure, trust. These these are all things that we encountered in the United States too, 20 yes, exactly. years ago. Yep. Totally. But uh, will will people trust Amazon with your credit card number? Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Same challenges. Uh Jimia Logistics is a technology and data driven answer to Africa's which accounts. Okay. Extensive partner network. Logistics partners ranging from individual entrepreneurs to large companies. Okay. It's all powered by this. Wide physical presence, seller drop-off network, warehousing, and consumer pickup stations. So those are owned by Jumia? It seems like it. So it's they're they're operating their own fulfillment. And it's interesting because it's a seller drop-off network. Hmm. Okay. Logistics is scalable asset light and a key competitor barrier. Okay. 24 million package. 98% of dealers are controlled by Jumia. 4.7% of property, plant, and equipment of total assets. How could it be so light? 50% mm -hmm. primary cities, secondary cities, rural packages delivered per region. Third-party monetization potential. So we could be uh, Amazon. Fulfillment by Amazon. Fulfillment, fulfillment by Amazon. Okay. Last mile tracking and return handling. So why would this be such a small percentage of their total assets then? I, I don't know. Unless they have some clever way of controlling a building without buying. I don't know. E-commerce is a strong driver of online payment adoption. Yep. That's kind of critical. Is uniquely tailored payment solutions for Africa. Multiple local payment methods. Cards. Transfer. And money. Yep. Okay. Seamless integration. One click. High secured. Preferred. Cash back and promotions, accounts, payment services, access to services. Okay. We are building a two-sided payment ecosystem with dedicated solutions. Consumers have the payments and then the merchants, unbranded guest checkout. So okay. they're providing tools and services for both consumers and the merchants to use their platform. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great blueprint. A scalable for prior technology custom built for the needs of Africa. Fleet management, three-party integrations, carrier optimization, so figuring out the best routes, payments, and lending. Yeah, I could see micro lending being a big, uh, oh, huge, big um, positive if they get into that. Also, enters credit risk mm -hmm. if they if they do so. Uh, I don't see it on there, but just right. Just wouldn't be they, they left the scoring. areas empty in the bottom there, so yeah. they can put more on. Marketing automation, a CRM system, customer relations management system. It's like, wow. Okay. They've even got like a little Shopify right there to yeah. stop management. Everything that you need all in one platform. Powerful data insights that benefit the whole ecosystem. So as we get more of this, we get more of this. I so believe that, that. I would too. Uh, as our competitive advantage grows, our competitive advantage grows. The, right. the better we it get. Compounds. Yes. Um, same way that Amazon did. You can be faster delivery, better offering. Yes, so that would be a that would be a, a network effect that I would buy if they yep. can prove that they're doing it. Yep. Okay. We have significantly enhanced fundamentals of our business, diversified, mixed towards everyday product categories. Yeah. So just to my background on this is like phones were huge, phones. Okay. And they wanted milk and bread and those things, toilet paper. You know the basics. Because it was more one-off when it was phones, you know, yeah. like how often I'm still using the same phone I had from before my son was born, but I, you know, but I need toilet paper all the time. So, I so still it's, again, it's like eBay. I mean, I, I still use eBay for electronics on, on occasion, like use so you're that guy. I am that guy. Yeah. Um, but I wouldn't go there to buy, um, groceries. Right. But that's what they're trying to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Enhanced economics, consistent track record of positive gross profit after fulfilling expense. Well, I, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> just no. You can't say that is part of your expense. Yeah, that after, a, oh, that's what they're saying. This is a positive number after accounting for that expense. 
Oh, after. Okay. All right. Yes. All right. I read it as before. Okay. But, I was yeah. wrong. Great. We're making money sort of on a unit basis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, two offerings raving $570 million. I hope they did that in February. We are focused on accelerating usage, growth, and development of Juicy, Jumu, Jumia Pay. So position it as the go-to platform, building Pan-African Payment FinTech Champion. Marketing, commercial, logistics, technology. Okay. We are increasing our investments to accelerate growth. Build branding and education, always on. Geotargeting of out-of-home advertising and underpaid at rares, okay? Uh, below the line, full funnels, scaling. So these are things that you don't see, sure. Consumer incentives. We're trying to become more well-known so that we can drive growth, sure. Okay, our tech backbone. 40% increase in tech headcount. Cairo Tech Hub will host 100 tech staff. So, invest and costs are going up. Gamification. And more features, okay. Clear signs of growth accelerating. Let's Orders see. of 8.5 million, up 28%. All right. So That's a good orders, number. Orders 20, up twenty eight percent and eleven percent quarter over quarter. That's fastest growth that's rate really good. in the past seven quarters. Annual active consumers up eight percent year over year and four percent quarter over quarter. Now so growing orders faster than customers. But what I'll say there is that with a market as big as they have, that's not very impressive to me. Like okay. Mercado Libre goes their active consumers by much more than that. Okay. And they are much bigger. Right. And if you're touting a network effect, uh, growing exactly. by both of those is going to be really important. So yep. 7.3 million. And what did they say? They had 500 million people. Internet 600 users. Million, 600, yeah. And 600 million in the countries yeah. that they operate in. Uh, people. And yes. then if you, and then less than... Yes, a s very small number of people in their target monkeys are actually on their platform. Yes, very small, which is why, I mean, I would hope for double to triple digit growth in consumers. Yeah, if you're off of a low base. Okay. All right, so that GMV, you did you just see that? Up what? one, because you that last one's really Sorry, uh, up 7% quarter over quarter and 8% year over year. Inflection point. Okay. I believe that, but that's not a very impressive inflection point. Our unit economics remain very strong and allow us to increase growth investments. Average order value down, down, down. That's not surprising. That's, be that's because they're the first part of the third party shift. Uh huh. Gross profit per order before customer incentives, discounts, marketplace discounts, and subsidies, as well as shipping discounts. <laughs> So all if right. you ignore all those costs, mm -hmm. <laughs> gross profit is stable. Which is good because that means they're taking a higher percentage since revenue is down. Order so volume is down. Yeah. So As no, the average order volume. Over yeah. V, yeah. So so their gross profit per order is 14%. So that can be looked at as kind of like their take rate. Except the fulfillment's not included. Uh the oh yeah. And then expenses. when we do that, it drops down to about four and a half percent, which isn't After bad. After fulfillment, uh, four per six percent. So what does that fulfillment include? Does that include the? Uh, so this is gross profits. So this is on the transaction, and this is the actual getting it to them. So they're four point eight two cents. Yeah, you can see this. This is up huge because right. of the business model shift. Okay. So one point three. Is this dollars? Uh, per order. Yeah, per, per order. order. Consumer incentives, 90 cents. SGNA, huge overhead. Technology and expense, GNA per order is down and adjusted EBITDA down. So they're still losing uh, money. So do you think there's room for them to meaningfully grow this number? Uh, no, but if see, the thing is, is this. So if, if they can keep their take rate at, let's say 5%, let's just say. If they can keep it there. Depends on how you're defining take rate. You're defining yeah, no, this? I, I'm defining that as gross profit after fulfillment. Okay. The key here, and this is why I zeroed in on active consumers and gross merchandise value. 
like Amazon works because everyone in the States is ordering from Amazon at some point in time. The key is volume. And yeah, so I think, I think if Jumia can keep say a 4.5 or 5% take rate, but they can get their con consumer growth to be 30, 40%, their GMV growth to be 30, 40% consistently, then it can work, but they aren't doing that. Yeah, they're not there yet. And are these numbers trending in the right direction? Do I mean, that's tough to say because they're talking about how they're investing more in this. And so, keep in mind, these are per order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the economics are... They're trying to... Still they're challenging. Put, they're putting lipstick on a pig. Yeah, we are seeing clear signs of growth accelerating. Okay, so that's the orders. That's the gross merchandising volume in annual active customers. So yeah, they hit a brick wall in 2020. You know, one of the interesting things about it was that uh, everyone was talking about how COVID uh, was an accelerant for everyone else. And it really had very little effect in Africa for a lot of reasons. And we don't need to dive into them, but it just wasn't the same. Hmm. I, wonder Part of it, I, mean, I wonder if somebody else was taking share when this was happening or if it was just a industry wide it i don't know i'm not sure so things are going good and then they just did nothing for 18 months so i understand why the stock has done nothing but go down but this is definitely a good recent trend mm -hmm. if that is sustainable is another question continues to shift towards everyday purchases uh okay great i agree that's and that pushes average order. That's another reason why average order goes down. Right. If phones and electronics are, these are obviously high dollar. These are low dollar. Okay. Okay. Digital services, digital and financial services offered via Jumia Pay is up. That FCMG one, mm -hmm. <laughs> fast market. Fast cons moving consumer, consumer goods. Consumer goods. Uh, fashion, beauty, home accessories. Is this okay? I mean, those are all great. Yep. Jumia Pay total total payment volume penetration reached twenty seven percent, plus fifteen percent, plus twenty seven percent. It's growing slow. That's really slow. Yeah. But given given the opportunity, it's slow. Thirty six percent of total orders. Okay. We are leveraging robust marketplace revenue momentum to invest further into growth. Exclusive of consumer incentives, marketplace breakdown, commissions, fulfillment, marketing, and such after consumer incentives. So their commissions have gone down significantly. Yep. And the month that they get for fulfillment has gone down. And that's really not good. If they're transitioning to third party and they're touting commissions as the main or I'm sorry, fulfillment as a main service that they can offer. Yeah. So they're getting a little bit of leverage to it, but hmm. okay. Our logistics service to third parties exhibit strong momentum, 3 million packages, 1 million logistics revenue, 760 clients, large corporations and SMEs, including, okay. These, these companies are using Oil. Jumia to expand its logistics capacity. To serve its sales outlets and oh maybe they have um convenience stores that would make much more sense than oil multi-brand and sole distributor for kellogg's huh all right gross profit trajectory reflects increased growth investments gross that's, profit that's code for our gross profits not going in a good direction yeah the, the dollars yeah gross profits down Consumer profit before consumer incentives, consumer incentives. Why is consumer incentives up so much? Yeah, here's the thing that I don't like too. They're up so much and they're still not adding that many. Right. This would be us having to give promotions and discounts to encourage spending on the platform, even though this, yeah. Consumer profits before consumer incentives. See, again, you don't get to do that. As a percentage of GMV. Yeah, stable. Okay. 
We continue generating fulfillment cost efficiencies. So costs are, is this a percent of revenue? No, that's the, that's raw expense. dollars. This is a percent. Oh, this is a raw expense. Okay. Yeah. Orders up fulfillment expense. Okay. Well, wait, what was the fulfillment expense per order? It went from 3.3 3 to 2. Now that's good. That's, that, that's an direction. important number right there. 3.3 3 to 2.6. That's really important. Yeah. Tech investments while maintaining G and A discipline. So tech investments are up while overall G and A is up slightly, excluding stock-based compensation. I don't know about you, but I'd like to see tech investments be much more than G and A. Um, I mean, it depends on the nature of the business, right? It, and yeah, with Sage, they're at. It takes a certain amount of overhead to even run a company like this. Yeah. So. Um, we are increasing sales and advertising investments to scale the platform below the line, above the line and marketing. So they're big time spending on the marketing. Okay. Adjusted EBITDA trajectory reflects increased investment in long-term growth. Uh, consumer adoption. See, that's the part that scares me the most right consumer there. Consumer incentive, sales and expensive. Yeah. It's expensive for them to acquire customers. And there's there's no proof that they're doing it. To pursue an asset light strategy that has liquidity position of 584 million. Cash utilization, cash used in operating activities, 46 million. So they set fire to $50 million. In a quarter. In a quarter, which is a 20th of their market cap, by the way. Um, net changes in working capital. Okay, so your working capital is improving. I'm guessing that's business model shift. Okay, cash and financial equipment's 583 million. Wow. So more than half of their market cap is in cash. Yep. It doesn't account for any debt that they might have, but. Well, we should check. I think you said they were debt free. Were they? I, I can't remember. Now. Oh, yeah. Uh, on Stock Card, I said that. You're right. So okay. looking at this, so commissions have gone down, fulfillment has gone down. First party revenue is up. So they that's weird. I thought that they is were shifting weird. away from that. That's very weird. So revenue is up be, uh, more than the total first party revenue. What? Yeah, total. Well, first, because value added services and marketing add a little bit. Is this... Marketplace revenue, commissions from them, fulfillment. Yeah, so, okay, this isn't trending in the right direction. This isn't trending in the right direction. That barely is, and that barely is. Well, that, this, that one's decent. I bet the value-added services is mostly Jumia Pay. Okay, so 10% growth year over year. Mm -hmm. And then first-party revenue is the was the big driver, even though they're touting that their strategy is shifting away from that. So gross profit was down even while revenue was up because first party revenue was such a big component what are they for them. selling that's very interesting um losses up huge stock-based compensation doubled nine million dollars constant currency gross merchandising volume up eight percent am i looking at the right one yep yep Total payment volume up 17%. Total payment volume as presented. Okay, gross profit down. Fulfillment expenses, because they were so touting their gross profit before. Well, it's fulfillment expenses. Before fulfillment expenses. Right. It's a hugely expensive thing. But this this makes sense if they went to more first party sales in this quarter, right? The sure. fulfillment expenses would be higher. So this was a quarter that they're touting, but they're it's also their they're going counter to their recent strategy. Yeah. And yeah. Sales and advertising is up huge, technology up big, GNA up, adjusted loss up, operating loss up, and only how much of that was nine nine only nine million only nine million of this was stock based comp. Gross merchandising volume. Wrong direction. Act annual active customers is up. Orders is up. Jimmy pay. Gross profit. Is that for the year? Fulfillment expenses. Yeah. 
Okay. Leading food delivery and on-demand service platform. I know this is really important. Okay. Uh, long chain relationships with QSR McDonald's, KFC, Pizza Hut, Domino's, homegrown restaurants, as well as 10 countries, 5,700 active restaurants, 20, 23% of total orders. Yeah. 9% of gross merchandising volume. Um, yeah. Well, that would also have downward pressure on your uh, order basket. Costs. Yeah, that too. Okay. Um, let's go back here. We should be able to get the third quarter. I'm curious here. Earnings release. What have you done? Although there might not be that much that's different. Yeah, we, we saw a whole bunch we of this. We saw pretty much all of this. Yeah, yeah, we saw pretty much all of this. We saw average volumes. Uh, yeah, we saw this. We saw this. We basically saw this. Yep. Okay, so let's go to their um, SEC filings. SEC filings, and we'll go to their annual. Oops. Annual filings. And their 20F. Oh, they have a 10K? That's weird. Um, that, yeah, that is weird. Uh, so we're looking for the 20F because this is a, a foreign listed company in the United States. And the order is different yeah. uh, than it was before. Let's go to this. Actually, let's look up their uh, management team. So corporate governments management. Okay. Jeremy Hodara is mm -hmm. the co-founder and CEO. Okay. And so is uh, Sasha. And Sasha, not going to even try, uh, co-founded the company, and he's been serving as co-CEO. Great. Okay. One thing I'll say is that the founding story of this company is uh, interesting as well, because there are two, I believe, Nigerians who really... Look at Andre Iguodala. Yeah, NBA basketball player. player. He's on the board. Um, but there were two um, Nigerian nationals who kind of came up with the idea and then they brought it to this German think tank. And I believe those two up above worked for the German think tank and, or, or, or a German, I forget what it was. They might say what they were, where they were working, but basically those two kind of took over. So it's kind of, I don't know. It's, it's a, it's a complicated founding story. I will give them credit for being founders, but I think with you some don't digging, give them credit. No, I will. I okay. will. But I think with some digging, uh, it might not be as clear as that. Okay. Thank you for that color. Okay, so this is all in euros. So gross profit has been going up since 2020. We know that that uh, took a, a reverse. So they have a huge operating loss. The biggest reason why is G&A, which is their biggest expense. Okay, so their financial statements look ugly, basic, and their share count is exploding. Ooh, yeah, it is. Uh, but they've just said they raised half a billion dollars. So right? it's much, it's probably close to 200 now. It was at okay. 160. Yeah. So non current assets are 18 billion, Turn, current assets are 337 million. And this is old uh, cash flows. Uh, so they set fire to. Yeah. Um, 100 million minus capex i don't see capex broken out um uh hugely hugely negative and they're those getting, right there are the most important numbers to me yeah active customers up orders up gross merchandise volume uh trending downward due to the business model change so not that impressive total payment volume that's actually bro growing pretty good yeah Jimmy, I pay transactions and adjusted EBITDA. Okay. Brian, one thing I want to point out because Mia had a really important comment of what's changed between the last time I looked at this company and now. She said they originally said that they were shifting to third party sellers, but then they said they don't want people to go to other platforms if sellers are not selling what people want to buy. So they shifted back to offer both. What I'll tell you is, is okay, good for them for paying attention, but also the number of times that this company has said, we're doing this. And then six months later, they said, <laughs> they switched eh, just kidding. I mean, they've pulled out of, I think, three African countries in the last two years alone. So, um, I mean, I don't think that we, I don't think we're going to argue that there's not an enormous amount of potential here. Like Mike 
uh, in the comments, Mike B is talking about, I agree completely. It's just whether or not this is the company that's going to do it or if it's even doable right now. I will say this. This is embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. Not a single member of the board or management team has a the noteworthy team number. Has less than one. One percent. Only one board member owns any. Two. Okay, this is two million, two point six million shares, and the stock is like ten bucks. If, if you, yeah, wasn't it ten dollars? I can't remember. The entire management team and board has twenty six million dollars on the line. That's not much. No, that's not much. <laughs> let me, I let me just check what the price was of Jumia. I'm double checking right and now. And even, even, well, I mean, assuming yeah, eleven bucks. Yeah. Okay. And by the way, this was in December. This was nine months ago. Eleven months ago. Oh. This this wasn't that. This wasn't they were selling out before this uh, big thing. So even then, I mean, that's no, it, really low, especially if you want to consider those two co-founders. Yeah. Jeff Bezos, before he got divorced, owned what? Sixteen percent of Amazon. Uh, something like that. Yeah. No skin in the game here. I will say Vincent None. just said that Jeremy Hodara recently bought 50,000 shares. Um, great, but still. That's $500,000. But no, no, no. Uh, he bought them at 20, so he's lost a million half of his dollars. money. He's lost half his money already. Okay. Concentration. Got to imagine that this isn't a huge You never know. They might have some like McDonald's yeah doesn't seem to be a risk all right doesn't no it's thing. not a risk that's called out okay uh i don't know how useful glass door is going to be well, but let's we'll check let's look um okay hey, that's that's not a bad number of reviews Seven hundred. actually yeah that is a lot okay uh nothing about a mission is to improve the quality of everyday by leveraging Good. technology all right so it's slightly different, but same same gist. Hey, pretty good. Yep, middle not of the bad. road. Not 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 good. Not, not bad. Not bad. The worst thing is compensation, work life balance, culture and values, diversity and inclusion, senior management. Senior management not the worst thing. Usually, senior management is yeah. the worst thing. So they're underpaying their employees, and the work life balance is tough. And these are pretty stable over time. So take it for what it's worth. Um, if you trust these numbers, I would put them as okay. The CEO approval rating is pretty good, though. And on the way up, despite the stock going in the opposite uh, direction. Uh, okay, was there anything else you wanted to check? Do we get to see how much debt they have? Yes, thank you. Duh. Uh, let's pull up the most recent uh, quarterly report. So press releases. Reports third quarter results. Down the PDF, okay. Uh, so let's go to there. Jumia pay update. We initially rolled out the one click and recurring payment merchant front. So launching new stuff, cash position, 534 million, 185 million in cash equivalents and 399 financial assets. Cash used was 48 million working capital. Okay. Guidance. Nothing. Uh, we don't know because of COVID. Okay, let's go to the balance sheet though. So, assets, eight, uh, oh, it, it's flipped. Uh, it's flipped in international markets. So, yeah. So, what they say for uh, uh 180 million there? Eighty-four total. Yeah. So that that would be the other. Th this would be the investments and stuff. So. Yeah, almost almost six hundred million dollars in cash, and then total current liabilities one hundred forty million. Total current liabilities. very strong balance sheet, one hundred and forty six, one hundred fifty five million in total liabilities. They have more than four x that in just cash. Yeah, I don't even see. Is there any? There's just nine million in debt. Yeah, non current borrowings, borrowings that are due in more than a year. So their balance sheet is uh very strong mm -hmm. very strong okay i think i'm ready yeah me too all right
let's start with the good. So today's date is 12 to 2021. Happy December. Uh, balance sheet uh, looks good. Tons of cash, very little liabilities. Uh, their gross margin. What was their gross margin? It was, I think it was pretty low. Oh, wait. No, I what thought was it was decent. I thought it was in the 50s? Yeah. Uh, I'll give them a one there. Uh, and it was trending higher, but now, based on that comment we got from, I forget what, what viewer, thank you so much, it is trending back down because they're going more mm -hmm. towards first party sales. Uh, but you get a one. Return on capital, zero. Free cash was zero. Earnings per share, zero. Uh, network effect. Um, do they have a, a network effect going? Yes, but it's a weak one. It is a weak one. Because it's not like the do dominant one. I'll give you three points for that. Um, uh, that, I mean, that, that might be overly generous. Uh, do they have switching costs involved? For you, the consumers, uh, once you get your ordering information on there, there's some weak switching costs for you. For Jumia the pay. merchant. Oh, yeah, for Jumia Pay. Yep. Um, for Jumia Pay, for the merchants, everything like that. Yeah, I'll give you, I'll give you a, a five there. Mm -hmm. Durable cost advantage. They could in time, uh, for, for sure they could. Uh, not right now though. Uh, brand is their brand worth anything? Hard times me seeing Boy, that as it, an outsider. Here's the thing though: if it did, I don't think they would be spending so much on marketing and seeing so little traction with active I'll consumers. Give you, I'll give you one. Uh, counter positioning is this business model disruptive to established uh, players? Well, who are they competing against? I would say mom and pop shops or local local sellers, uh, but I'm sure they have plenty of online competition in the space. Yeah. Um, so I don't have a good feel for giving them that. And that's a nine on that. And how is their moat doing? I'd say it's stable. It's not like blowing me away with widening. Uh, yeah. So th that's a uh, 12 on moat. That even might be generous. It might be. But okay. Uh, optionality. Uh, lots of optionality. Sure. Uh, they're, they got lots going on there. Uh, five, maybe even, a, maybe, maybe even a six with all the different stuff that they have going on. Organic growth runway. Oh my God. It's not even close to 15% now. And it hasn't really been. What is the potential? The potential is certainly there. The I'm potential not gonna, is just uh, huge. Yeah, I'm not going to give you a lot of credit, though, because it's going in the wrong direction. Are they a top dog and first mover? I don't know. And this they is one where they don't if you're at home and you're watching this and you have more insight than we do, add it onto your score. Yeah, I'll give them a one for that. They don't seem to be a top dog and first mover. They claim that they are. But again, we're not seeing the results come up. Do they have operating leverage ahead of them? Yes, lots of operating leverage ahead of them. Are customers expensive to acquire? Yes. Ridiculous. They're, very, they're spending hugely on sales and marketing, and their customers aren't growing that rapidly. I'll give you a one there. Once a customer's on board, is their spending recession-proof? It's trending towards that If as they're going more towards the-, the um, fast-moving yep, consumer goods. I'll give you a three there. Maybe, if, maybe you should be a four. I'll give them a four. Okay. Uh, is revenue recurring? Uh, previously, it wasn't really. Now it's coming more towards recurring, right? If you're going from mm -hmm. electronics to everyday goods, this is one of the business shifts for them. Uh, so yeah, I'll give you a three there. Uh, pricing power. Can this company raise prices without oh. losing customers? Yeah, I have a hard time seeing that. This, this is Look at all the discounts they've been giving. Yeah. If, if, yeah. Two? Yeah. Soul in the game. It is run by its founders. Inside ownership is zero. Yeah. Zero. Uh, if I could subtract points here, I would. The glass door ratings were okay. Uh, the mission statement, good. Yep. Uh, how is the stock done since coming public? Awful. Uh, are they buying back stock, paying raise dividend? Not. Nope. Are they doing versus expectations? Uh, they yeah, have, they have nothing here. Uh, that might be a, a limitation of, of Yahoo. Um, so I'll give you nothing there. All right. 49. All right. Now the bad stuff, accounting regularities. I hope not uh, customer concentration. No industry disruption. No outside forces. Well, that's a tough no. one. I mean, you depend on, no, I'll, I'll, I'll ignore that. Um, because they're in a bunch of different geographies. If they said that we're, 90% of our business is in Nigeria, mm -hmm. then, then you are dependent on the economy of Nigeria. 
but I, I'm not going to go for that. Big market loser. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Binary event. Nope. Extreme dilution. Yeah, yeah. that's been high. Uh, growth by acquisition. Not that I saw. Complicated antitrust. Headquarter risk. No. They're headquartered currency. in Europe. They're headquartered in Europe. Uh, currency risk. Yeah, 100% of their sales are foreign. Uh, so two there. Uh, so not a very good score. Nope. Uh, not a very good score. Having said all that, I'm not thrilled about putting this putting this in my thumb down uh, portfolio <laughs> because this stock is essentially trading at two Twice times their cash, cash uh, right now. So if anything happens that shows that this business is catching uh, back on fire and performing, I could see this <laughs> stock going higher. Yeah. Right. The timing that is right now. So I would never bet against this company in real life, but for me, it's not going into my uh, winning portfolio. All right, your turn. All right, so December 2nd, uh, I give them full credit for the mission statement. I like it, leverage tech to improve everyday life in Africa. So for the moat, I give them just a half point for network effects. They've got to prove that they can add people to this and shifting away from third-party merchants, which Mia's explanation helps us understand, but that lessens the network effect because then merchants aren't coming to your, your platform. I will give them a full point out of two for switching costs for Jumia Pay, the TPV, the total mm -hmm. payment volume, is, incre is increasing at a modest clip. And I will also give them just a half point for low-cost uh, production, logistics being what it is that they can produce low-cost internally. And I'm only comparing that to the competition because I'm seeing these guys throw a ton of money at this, and it's still not great. So, but, but I can only imagine it's even more not great for someone who's trying to do it from a different starting point of less. Mm -hmm. So what is two that points? total? So is that two points? Yes. Two points. Okay. So optionality, I'm going to give them two and a half. Um, and here's the thing. They should be three, but they have shifted their focus so many stinking times over their very short public life. It really draws into question whether these two know what they're doing. Well, I think I think it's pretty clear they're shifting their strategy. They're seeing what's happening. It's not working as well as they thought, and they're chip pivoting again. So, I mean, I, I understand why they're doing that. Oh, I understand why they're doing it too. But this this again is one of the problems with having two people running the company who are they did they they don't they're not African they're not from Africa, and I just think that there there is some level of intimacy and knowledge with a place that comes with growing up there. Like I would never go to Mexico and try and start a business unless I had lived there for a really long time because there is stuff that I would have to understand that I don't even know that I don't understand. And I just have to believe that if this was being run by people who are from Africa, particularly Nigeria, because it's such an important area that we would see less of this zigzagging all over the place. Okay. Uh, for financial fortitude, I'm going to take a half point off. I love their balance sheet, but they are burning cash like crazy. Um, concentration, not a problem. Glassdoor, give them a zero because it was middle of the road. Founders, I'll give them a point. But ownership, I'm going to take a point off because that was embarrassing. So mine, like yours, is going in the fragile, um, in the fragile category. Okay. Time to go to our portfolio. So for you, this is going in your fragile uh, portfolio. That your portfolio is performing quite well, actually. I saw it's down 33%, uh, yeah. which is the goal. That's the goal. Yes. <laughs> well, this is more of a, um, you expect this portfolio to do to do poorly. So mm -hmm. do 100, 90, maybe, yeah. five, 97 that sounds good. shares, a score of six. And then my pass on portfolio, uh, also doing poorly, uh, to, be, to be fair, they're all doing poorly <laughs> because pretty much all the stocks that we've talked about, uh, are, are, uh, down, uh, which again is why the three to five year time frame is so important and why we're not going to be drawing any conclusions about how we're doing anytime soon. We still look. Oh, sure. We still look. We understand that uh, the feedback loop is very, very, very long. Yep. That's just how it goes, uh, especially wanna... with this, a lot of the stocks that we uh, talk about.
We want to remind people that you can head on over to StockCard and you can follow our portfolios, but you can also create your own portfolio, which over that three to five year timeline is such an important learning tool. No better way to learn than to hold yourself accountable and say, wow, I screwed this up or I was, my instincts are right about this one. You know, Brian, before we sign off, I just want to say that if I was a type of investor who was willing to take lots of small bets, this would have to be in my portfolio, right? Because it would have to be. Yeah. If, if I took a ton of, if I took, if I took a hundred small bets, 1% each, this would have to be in there because worst case scenario, I lose 1%, right? What is the upside with this company? It is phenomenally high. Now I don't invest that way and I would never put more than 1% of my portfolio into this. But if I had to, if that's how I invested, I mean, the, the upside is just huge here. Also, the likelihood of hitting that upside is incredibly small. Right. For me, uh, for, for me, I, I I understand that that style of thinking. Uh, th this would be in my pass uh, yeah. category personally. Uh, even if I was betting one percent bets on companies like that, th this isn't attractive enough for me to be like, yeah, I'm willing to swing on on this. Uh, personally, um, sure, I, I I totally understand it could it could work out and go higher, but I just think there's better high risk reward potential companies uh, mm -hmm. out there that are swinging for the fences. And uh, if personally. I personally, yeah, and and if I had to focus on just one thing improving, one thing, it would be the active customers, total payment volume, gross merchandise volume, bada bada bada. That's fine. That's great. Nothing will happen unless. It gets to be more adopted in Africa because 7.3 million out of out of a million potential customers, but we think that it's probably like 300 million maybe, uh, is just it's just not it's not big enough. Yeah, Mike B saying they should build a electric rail system. Uh, Mike, that would be hugely capital intensive uh, yeah. to to do so. Uh, that I, I would rather them invest in drones. Or something like that. Sure. Although, I mean, geez, there's huge challenges with that. A huge challenge with that. I, mm -hmm. That even might be a dumb idea. Uh, okay. I mean, one reason, Joe, that they might not go the debt route is that they're they're bleeding so much cash. Number one, um, and two is I, I'm not sure who's going to lend to them because they're bleeding so much cash. Yep. Uh, somebody said that Mercado Libre is an investor. In, yeah, uh, I in saw this that. company, I, I, did we did we see them on the? I didn't see them on the. Um, I didn't the see them on the list. Mercado Libre. Huh? I just did a search in there. Oh no, Mercado Libre. Nope, their name isn't coming up in the. Where's their twenty F? Mercado Libre. I don't have. They're not coming up in the 20F, so they either invested a teeny tiny amount or, yeah. So I, I don't know what the source on that is. Um, is. The one other thing that might be kind of interesting is they've, uh, a couple of people talked about how they might be facing some competition from Amazon and Alibaba. Amazon, I they, that would be a really hard one for me to see. Uh, Alibaba, maybe. But look, going into a new country and trying to do this is way harder than trying to ship your software there. To ship your software there, you literally push a button on your computer and it's done. We're talking about things that have to happen in the real world, not the digital world here. Uh, Chilled Monkey says they're going to be pa they're going to be profitable for at least in two, two years. years? Okay. Not going to be for at least two years. Dave Drum points out that Bally Gifford owns ten percent of them. They are, uh, they are a um, legit company, uh, legit investment firm that I certainly uh, respect. Thank you, Dave, on the. But again, ten percent—that's just a hundred million dollars for Bally Gifford. That's that's not much. Right. All right. Well, either way, we learned something about uh, Ju Jumia. Uh, yeah. could, could they turn this around if they can keep their recent trend going and accelerate that? I could totally see this company reigniting investor ima imagination, uh, but they have, they're having some execution and, um, 
uh, incent in uh, business model challenges yeah. that they haven't proven to me that this model is bulletproof and works. And to be honest, the inside ownership is embarrassing. Yeah. Like given this is a founder led business, that's been a uh, public for nine years. The founders do not have much skin in the game at all. That's not something that makes me feel good about investing in a company like this. Yeah. And what I will say though, just on the, on the other side of that coin, if there is one stock in my thumbs down portfolio that I think could kill that, it would be this, like this could shoot to the moon. Sure. Uh, my investing framework isn't designed to pick out stocks that could a thousand X it's yep. designed to whittle down, uh, yep. whittle out the port for companies that are super risky and focus on the company, the businesses that are less risky. So that's what my checklist is, uh, is designed to do. So could this go up huge? Yes, it could. Oh, it's yeah. just, it's just a very, very risky bet. Uh, right now, but I would never <laughs> bet against this company in real life uh, oh with real money. So for tracking purposes, that's why it's on there. Yep. All right. Well, we hope we we hope that you uh, like this video. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing a vote on our YouTube channel for uh, with our members going to choose what stock we do from scratch next. As a side note, we just sent off a one thousand six hundred and thirty five dollar check to Team C's. Thank you to everybody that uh, chose to become a member of our channel. Uh, that you know, every little bit helps, and uh, we're helping Team C's to get to their to their goal. And thank you to uh, StockCard.io for sponsoring today's video. I'm Brian Feraldi. That's Brian Stoffel. See you next week. Brian's out.